Hey, hey, welcome, and thank you for tuning in for episode two of Science Friction, a podcast about journeys to overcome design challenges. I'm your co-host, Avery Brookins, joined by my incredible co-host, Adam Spacht. Hey, Adam. Hey, Avery, how you doing? Good, good. And today, we're going to be speaking with Kenton Bryce. He's the Director of Technology Innovation at University of Oklahoma College of Law, and he's here to talk to us today about a new project he's been working on at the Law Library, which involves TV monitors and some linear guide rails from IGIS. Thank you so much for joining us, Kenton. Great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. The project with the monitors and the slides, I was Wondering if you could kind of describe it so you can kind of give us a visual like in our minds of, like what it looks like. Because I did kind of see a still photo, but I was still a little bit confused on exactly like what it is and how it works. Yeah, that's a that's a common question I get <laughs> so, um, <laughs> from librarians and others. They're like, what is this? Uh, so yeah, we, so a little bit of background on what we were thinking and I'll get into what we actually uh, designed and how it works. Um, we want complete flexibility in the room, right? We, we, we want, um, we, well, I'll say this, we want complete flexibility with a really good looking space, right? We don't want wires everywhere. We, we, we don't want trip hazards is what I call wires. Um, we want something that looks professional that, uh, you know, speaks to the tradition and, um, kind of the gravity of the law school, right? Uh, this is the legal profession. It should be, um, you should feel a weight when entering the building of like, wow, this is professional. It, this is not something that we just kind of threw together. They've actually thought through this because that's what lawyers should do. We should be thinking through everything, right? And so um, we're just legal engineers or you can call it that too for your engineering people out there. Um, but so we wanted that. So we were like, okay, Desks are easy. We put them on casters, we can roll them around. Uh, whiteboards are easy. Put them on casters, roll them around. Reconfigure the room, have groups. We can have, we can actually design it as an auditorium. We can do a lot of different things. Then it came to audiovisual components. And the first design we got back from our designer had, in a traditional way had everything on carts, monitors on carts. And um, that just creates multiple headaches. <laughs> so uh, what if somebody moves a cart and doesn't unplug something first, right? And all of a sudden you've ripped an outlet out of the wall because it hit that angle. And, or do we need floor boxes everywhere? And what is that going to look like? And how is that going to operate? Um, how are we going to do this? And then we want to make sure everything is completely interoperable where a faculty member or a professor or adjunct can be at the rostrum or podium and display their laptop, the, the computer, their phone, their iPad. We have Apple TV everywhere in the school, but uh, we have HDMI connections, we have USB-C connections, you name it. How do we display that in a way that they can choose what they want to display where? Um, and so if they have multiple devices, they can decide where it goes. Um, and we've done that before, but then it was well, how do we get the students to be able to display back so the students could plug in somewhere and display their material that they're working on, right? Let's really flip the classroom. Oh, and then how do we create a system without the wires everywhere that if we can reconfigure the room, we can re reconfigure the screens, right? And so we had all these needs. And I remember there was a meeting and I'm going to shout out to a guy named Hayden Pelly who works at the law school. Um, we were sitting around a table. This is in January of 2019. And we were talking about this issue and he just kind of offhand, like, what if we just put everything on rails and we can slide them? And I was like, that's an interesting idea, Hayden. And so we started doing some searching around and really didn't see anything like this, except for one company out of New York that does some motorized movement and uh, it looked prohibitively expensive. <laughs> so we were like, no, I don't think we can do that. Um, and so we had a budget uh, that we had to stick to. And so we started looking around and that's where you guys came on our radar as trying to design a solution um, that could look great. It looks phenomenal. And I can't describe it. You have to see a picture of it, right? It's, um, it's we have the crimson red stripe wall because we're at University of Oklahoma, right? And so we're crimson and cream. And then uh, above that and below that stripe are oak uh, panels. 
and then in the middle is an aluminum rail. And what's really going on is you have Igus microflizz on above and below, and then you have a dryland hybrid rail in the middle. And we custom designed some plates to hang monitors on. Mind you, these monitors are TVs or displays, whatever you want to call them, weigh 180 pounds a piece. Um, they're not light. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we, we had this problem and we're tr we didn't know what to do. And so we designed it. I mostly designed it with some help from other people, but we just designed it. And it's like, let's just put this together. We didn't see anything in the wild. And uh, I guess came alongside us and helped us with it. And it was, it was awesome. And so we love the product. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. I'm curious to know kind of what are the benefits of having like the monitors to have that ability to slide? Cause I've, I haven't even seen that. Like even at my university, uh, when I was in college, I've not seen monitors that have the ability to slide like that. So well, what are the benefits of that? So I'll give you a couple of examples, right? And so the benefit is you can put content, visual content anywhere you want in the room. It has four monitors on each wall, right? On uh, parallel walls. And so our Eastern wall has four monitors and our Western wall have four monitors. Um, and then we have 16 tables, uh, whiteboard tables that are if I get this right, seven foot by three foot tables. So, and then we can, they're on casters, we can move them around wherever we want. And so the idea of moving furniture around wherever you want now brings into, well, how do we move around visual content to wherever we need it to be to make sense for whatever the layout of the room is? And so first example is we need eight workstations. We need eight groups of six people. And that's really like what we call the default layout. And so we can move the monitors to put you right on the center of two tables, basically. And so six groups uh, around two tables. Uh, that's our default layout. <laughs> when we first started using the classroom, we decided we could never use it like that because of COVID. And so what did we do? We turned the entire room into a pseudo auditorium where um, I spent some time with our fire marshal and some other people, and we designed a new layout that actually had 25 tables with one person per table. And then we positioned them. So we just moved the monitors on the wall to be where it'd be most effective so everybody could see from their vantage point. Uh, and that was the very first time we ever used the room, and that was because of COVID. We had social distancing requirements from the university. Um, if we were going to be in person, uh, in the spring of 2021. And so I taught in that classroom. Uh, I taught my technology and law practice in that format. So what I actually did in my classroom is I took two monitors and put them right together. And so you had two monitors next to each other on one side of me, and then two monitors on another side of me. On the back wall, you had two monitors and two monitors. And then I put my Zoom class, because I was in a hybrid format, half my students were offsite, they were remote because of COVID. Half of them were in the classroom. And so one monitor had my presentation and my lecture and whatever else I wanted to show my students. And then the other monitor had the Zoom gallery view. And so if you are in class, you can see all your classmates as you're looking at the presentation and the content. And then we have cameras in the room so you can actually see the classroom as well if you're off site. So, so that was uh, one of the um, benefits of having this system. We, in a moment's notice, we can just slide these things across and create whatever kind of layout we want. Uh, the third one is what I call our meeting room or boardroom functionality, where we slide all four of them together to the middle of the room and create a little conference table in the middle. And then you could have multiple types of content streaming through Apple TV or plugged into anything. And then we can select where we send what to go where. So you can think of like a war room mentality of having a bunch of different content, on different monitors, all right there in one. So you're not having to look around. And so. When you were doing, <clears throat> excuse me, your preliminary designs and everything, I, was the weight of the monitors a, a challenge at first or did that get solved fairly easily or, or was there some different challenge that, that jumped out or, or was it fairly seamless? No, the biggest challenge uh, that we had in the design phase was wire management. And um, that is really, because linear movement, and I am not an engineer. So remember, I am a lawyer, I am an educator, I'm a librarian. I am not an engineer. 
I will say this, I did a hot minute of petroleum engineering in my undergrad and then did a technical drawing class and said, never again will I ever, ever take an engineering class. Um, <laughs> sorry to everyone out there. Uh, <laughs> I don't, actually, I don't apologize for that. I have a great career. Uh, <laughs> it was not for me. Uh, but I think, I mean, I'm a lawyer. I think critically, I think, I think through stuff. I love math. Right. And so I'm not one of those lawyers like I went to law school because I hate math. You know, I, I actually enjoy this stuff. I enjoy design. I do woodworking um, and enjoy designing things. And so in the design process, linear movement wasn't, quote unquote, a big issue to me. I was like, we can make that happen. It was how do we make that happen while having a seamless, fluid design where we don't see any wires ever? right? We don't have anything hanging from the wall. We don't have to unplug and plug things in. And I've seen examples of people have what, like the movable whiteboard and like it's just sitting on a rail system, but the plug, they just unplug it, move the whiteboard or the monitor on this whiteboard mount and then plug it back in. I'm like, we're not doing that, right? It, it's we don't want to put that <laughs> onus on whoever needs to use the room. They just need to be able to slide that monitor over and it goes. That was challenge number one. And that was really hard to figure out because uh, that's, where, that's where I started searching around um, and trying to find a solution that was encased, right? Uh, like cable chains, I, I started learning terminology that I'd never known before. Um, a lot of information from your website, a lot of information from IGUS's virtual uh, conference expo or whatever that's called was super helpful. Um, and I was like, well, I'm not doing a massive crane arm. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how we do. Uh, anyway, so, so I just got on our radar as a cable chain uh, solution, but then it was, then I, again, I'm not in this world. So I was like, where are these troughs? How does this work? how do I hide the wires? That's all I was trying to figure out um, to where we could have horizontal movement over 60 feet and not see anything going on behind the scenes, right? And so that was challenge number one. That's where the microflows came in. Challenge number two was less of a challenge and more of something that I kept questioning in my head over and over and over and over, even to the day it was installed, actually the week after after it was installed, I think I woke up with a nightmare thinking, oh my gosh, is there too much weight on these rails? And is this thing gonna come crashing down? And my contractor was like, don't worry about it. You know, he actually hung on the rail himself. Like, <laughs> I don't even call that like a pull up on the rail. And I freaked out. I was like, don't do that. <laughs> and so all I'm thinking is liability. And so, um, yeah, so weight was not a challenge after all. It was just a concern I always had in the back of my head. And we fixed that. We, you know, we, we put, uh, I don't even know what they're, pillow blocks, right? Those, those the, on the hybrid uh, rail, which according to my sales guys from IGUS was like, this is an unproven product, but we know it works, right? We, we don't see this in the wild a lot. And, but it's made for horizontal linear movement. That's why it's designed this way. And so I had a lot of assurances from engineers that the weight's not going to be an issue. I was the one waking up in night sweats of, you know, is this actually going to work? Because I'm looking at the pillow blocks. They're not very big. And I'm just like, oh no. But we, but we built our own carriage system, right? Using the blocks. And we had a, a metal fabricator that we had used before uh, when we, we custom built some virtual reality uh, workstations in 2017 and had this medical fabricator, uh, metal fabricator do them. And so I called them and they custom built uh, a plate to fit the blocks that could also fit our monitor mounts to create that bridge between the IGUS system and these 180 pound uh, displays we had. Um, and those guys ran the numbers and they're engineers I'm like yeah you're fine and so but the challenge was wire management and um i think that's always going to be a challenge in technology space when you want to create a space that looks like the star trek enterprise um but um works 
like your home office, right? And so I'm, a, I'm looking around my office right now and I have wires for my monitor and, some, and wire management it's there. Our system, you don't see one wire. And, and like you say, in a, in a professional learning environment, not only do you have the liability and the trip hazards and all that of all these cords, but you know they're going to get torn up in usage and you know, like you say, they're going to start to not look so great over time and you know, to have that all in one solution that does the mechanical piece, but also the aesthetic piece so that people can focus on learning. That That's makes right. a lot it, of sense. And it's maintenance too. It, it is, if there were wires, people are going to pull them. And so, it's, 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 <laughs> let's be honest. And so, I mean, I learned all about how, man, how the radius of a wire and everything because we're just, you know, all that had to go into consideration of um, the thickness of wires we were using because each microfluid, we have the we we have the dual system, so we have the parallel or the uh, the um, the opposed system, and so which works great. And that was part of the design challenge as well. How do we how do we fit four monitors on one wall where they can't cross each other, but we need to come up with a cabling system? And that's why we had one microfluid on top and one microfluid on bottom. And then each one has their own trolley. Um, the team that actually installed this stuff, uh, <laughs> this stuff, uh, our, our I guess solution, um, they're incredible. And I think they hated me for a hot minute um, because <laughs> we were we were squeezing these wires, and they had the silicone um, lubricant and everything to get them in there. And because we were doing it over, I mean, each each. So every monitor has its own dedicated cable chain of 65 feet. And, um, and so they're having to pull wire through, uh, you know, 65 feet of cable chain eight times in one room. <laughs> they were not wow. happy with me. <laughs> so, uh, but we made it work and it works great. Like I cannot emphasize how great it works. It's just, I can't overemphasize that. And kudos to you for putting this together without being an engineer. Like if I was in your shoes, I have no idea what I would have done. It's like, hey, find a solution for this. I would be like, well, I guess I'll call someone else to do it. So <laughs> kudos to you for for even figuring out what to do. That's that's pretty awesome. Well, thanks. Hey, it's not just me, right? It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's one of those things. You have a vision of how to do something and you, I mean, let's be, I know a little bit about like design and how, like for woodworking, like my background in woodworking, like I can use SketchUp to model a project and then I go give that to the really smart people in the room and I say, how do we do this? I'm going to call these, this vendor, I guess I've never met before. I don't know. And then uh, to, to I guess his credit, and I, you know, I don't know if this podcast is supposed to be strictly about I guess or just what people are doing out there, um, but your salespeople were so hands-on um, and I think they're engineers, I think because they could speak really well into this. Um, it really was this vision at the very beginning of, hey, this is a partnership. This is, the, this is us who have a vision of how we want to get something done. We go, we go research vendors and um, we found IGUS. And then from like probably the first week, it was just, oh my gosh, you guys are so invested in trying to help us figure this out. And that was so helpful uh, because and, and honestly, because microfluid apparently isn't used very much and neither is the hybrid dry, dryland rail uh, or dryland hybrid rail. Um, those sales engineers were also kind of like experimenting with us. Like, oh my gosh, this is going to be super cool. We've never got to really sell this product in this type of way before. So it was, I put it like this, Avery. It was a bunch of nerds sitting around a Zoom table, just like <laughs> nerding out on how cool this could be, right? That's all it was. <laughs> so, um, and these are the moments I love, right? This is where fun stuff gets to happen in your work where you're just like, man, this, is, this would be neat if this could happen. Oh, well, how do we do this? Oh, we could get this going on. And, you know, engineers and lawyers aren't too dissimilar, right? We're, we're all solutions engineers, right? We're, we're trying to come up with solutions to problems, whether they be legal or technical. And so, yeah, I mean, it was a fun environment. It was fun to work on this project. Really, really fun. And that's such a cool story. And, 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 and thank you for sharing that. A lot of the salespeople for, I guess, are engineers. A lot are not degreed 
engineers, but they have that mechanical background and that curiosity level. So that's great to hear your local support was able to kind of dive in and take ownership and, and, uh, and, and have some excitement level about it as well. And geek out. Yeah, I think the coolest moment for me, well, there's a lot of cool moments, but one of them was the FaceTiming with someone in Rhode Island on the shop floor of when we were trying to figure out the whole spacing on the rails. And uh, I was like, who does this? Like, who, who FaceTimes me from their shop floor to make sure we get this right? Um, and because they wanted to make sure they got it right. And it was just, it was one of those things. I just get a FaceTime call and I'm like, oh, okay. And they're like, hey, does this look right? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. You tell me. <laughs> so, because I'm not an engineer. And so, uh, but then, you know, again, two nerds just kind of working it out. Um, but I, I was so impressed because I was like, man, the, the care that I felt from my guess, uh was there. You know, it, it, it was tremendous. And I think it ultimately gave us a very successful outcome with what we have. I think we've we've nailed it on on the 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 main project. What's what's the future hold? If you're allowed to discuss, or you know, is, is there other nebulous ideas that are that are bubbling? Or if you're not allowed to discuss yet, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adam, I have lots of ideas. We have lots of ideas at the law school. Some have a lot to do with facilities. Some have nothing to do with facilities. Um, but, you know, we, we as an institution, uh, at least in my corner of our institution, really, we, we want to make law school the best possible environment to grow the next great generation of lawyer, right? And, and I mean, it's hard to ignore the reality of how the world has changed in the past 10 years, two years, um, definitely 50, 100 years. And so as it relates to how we do law school, you know, some of it may need to change. Some of it we may, may need to keep, you know. And, and so I have a lot of ideas. There's a lot of people at our law school have a lot of ideas about the future of legal education um, and how we best craft it to serve society at large. Like, you know, that's truly what I believe. We, we produce lawyers who are going to be leaders. Uh, they're going to be congressmen. They're going to be judges. They're going to be really successful attorneys. And so what are we doing now to set them on a course for success, right? And so we have lots of ideas. I can't really talk about anything, um, but you know, we're, for the past six years since I've been here, I've been here for six years, we have a track record of always moving forward in our facilities, in our training and curriculum, um, in what we do in our student experience. Obviously it extends far beyond technology. It's it's diversity, it's equity, it's inclusion, it is wellness initiatives, it is all the above of really training up the whole lawyer, as I would like to call it. Um, and so we do have lots of ideas. Um, obviously, we work for a public institution, and so a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, funding. Right? And so someday, you know, and we'll get more funding to do more cool stuff, and we'll just keep moving forward. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kenton. Thanks for having me. Love being here. Great. That was Kenton Bryce, Director of Technology Innovation at University of Oklahoma College of Law. His monitor slide project designed with microflis systems and dryland hybrid systems from IGIS will make it easier for faculty and students to quickly and easily reconfigure the visual layout of their classrooms. Visit the law library to check them out. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Science Friction. Zach Davis is the producer, Eddie Aquayo is the sound and video engineer, and Kelsey Mariah Orsman is the graphic designer. Adam Specht is your fabulous co-host, and I'm your other co-host, Avery Brookins. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next week.